I am Dr. Lubna Khamis Mohammed, Assistant Professor of Nursing Service Administration, Faculty of Nursing at Tanta University. I'll talk about my research article entitled Experiences of Saudi Female Student Toward the Phenomena of Bullying Behaviors During Nursing Education Program. In contemporary society, bullying becomes a serious problem that negatively affects the student, educators, workplace, quality training and patient care. Bullying in nursing is a widespread problem from academia area to clinical setting. It occurs in nursing practice as well as in nursing education at all levels and in all contexts. It often involves power abuse, feeling of defenselessness in judges and undermining dignity. In fact, the nursing student or new graduates are particularly susceptible when entering this kind of workplace because they often younger, have less clinical and life experience, fewer acquired coping skills, and the minimum power in their environmental hierarchy. In nursing, polling is not a new concept. It is often experienced in healthcare setting, practice areas, and the university environments. Pulling can be directed upward from faculty against a student downward from a student against the faculty or horizontally from a student to student or faculty to faculty. Pulling is an umbrella term that involves aggressiveness, mobbing, incivility, workplace violence, harassment, and verbal abuse. The undergraduate students are commonly subject to bullying behaviors in the classroom and the clinical setting during their education that negatively causes verbal, physical, relational, social, and the cyber exclusion. It accompanied by anxiety, poor performance, leaving nursing program that lead to a toxic working environment and affect patient outcomes. The consequences of experiencing bullying can adversely create an unsafe environment as well as behavioral and emotional difficulties that interfere with the student learning. The most common symptoms of bullying include headache, bad temper, stomach ache, back ache, nervousness, inferiority, difficulties in sleeping, dizziness, loneliness, morning tiredness, and the helplessness. When bullying occurs among a nursing student, it negatively affects student education lives and the preferences after graduation. Coping strategies are the behavioral and the psychological effort that the individual employ to reduce and be tolerant for stressful situations. It is important for the student nurses to select the best coping methods as the wrong strategy may worsen this situation. Globally, the prevalence rates documented the number of students who involved in polling as victims ranged from 7% to 43%, and as perpetrators ranged from 5% to 44%. Recently, the problem has become more prevalent. However, there is no research addressed the bullying phenomena among nurse students in Saudi Arabia. Although international studies have extensively explored bullying behaviors, scholars in Arab countries have not given this phenomena much attention. Therefore, much researchers and investigations are required in this area. The main aim for this research is to explain the phenomena of bullying among nursing students during their study in nursing education program. The more specific objectives aimed to study the types, frequency, and the consequences of bullying behaviors experienced by nursing students determine the most likely sources to be the bully as well as identify the coping strategies to deal with these behaviors and recognize the reasons for not reporting about bullying behaviors. The present study aimed to answer the following research questions. What are the most widespread learning environments that involve bullying behaviors? What are the types and frequency of bullying behavior that nursing students experience during nursing education? 
who is the most likely source to be the poly during their study in nursing program? What are the consequences and the coping strategies of polling behaviors? What are the reasons for not reporting about polling behaviors? Is there a relation between experienced polling behaviors, types and the consequences with nursing student academic year? The present study was utilized a descriptive cross-sectional design to answer the research questions. The study was conducted in the Nursing Department of Applied Medical Science College at University of Hafer al Batin in Kingdom, Saudi Arabia. Convenience sample was used which consisted of 130 Saudi female nursing students who were accepted to participate in this research. The student enrolled at sophomore, junior, senior internship during the academic year of 2018 and 2019. The inclusion criteria of participant selection stated that all female nursing students must be have an experience in clinical learning environment. Therefore, the first academic year was excluded from the sample because the clinical training started from the second year. This study involved the following questionnaire, which consists of four parts. The first part involves personal information as age, academic year, the presence or absence of polling behaviors, as well as the extent and the effect of polling behaviors on a student performance. The second part contains items of polling behaviors types, verbally, nine items, physically six items, and psychologically ten items to assess the most frequent type of polling behaviors that experienced by nursing students during their study in nursing program. The third part covers the symptoms of polling behaviors Physi physiologically seven items, psychologically eight items, and verbally four items to estimate the frequency of polling behaviors consequences. The fourth part incorporates four closed-ended questions, the widespread learning environments that involve bullying behaviors that include four options, the most likely source to be poly during the study in nursing program that contains seven options, the frequency of coping strategies that used by nursing students to deal with polling behaviors that contain nine options, and finally, the frequency for reasons of not reporting about polling behaviors that include eight options. Table 1 declares the social demographic data of Saudi female nursing student. It was apparent that 57.7% of studied sample were in age group 21 to 23 years old, and 47.2% of them were enrolled in senior year. The majority of respondent, 83.8 percent, experienced polling behavior during the period of studying in nursing education program. Furthermore, 80 percent of participants estimated the extent of polling behavior as a major problem in their academic environment, and 59.2 percent of them reported that polling behaviors would affect their performance. Figure 1 represents the total mean values of polling behaviors types experienced by female nursing student. The most frequent reported polling behaviors types by participants were verbal abuse, followed by psychological abuse, and lastly, physical abuse. Figure 2 represents the total mean values of polling behaviors consequences experienced by female nursing student. The most frequent reported polling behaviors consequences by participants were psychological symptoms followed by physiological symptoms and finally the behavioral symptoms. Figure 3 declares the frequency of most widespread learning environments of polling behaviors. The female nursing student reported that the clinical practice setting is the most widespread learning environment that involves polling behavior which represents 30 9.2%, followed by traditional classroom 38.5%, then skills laboratory 20%, and finally interactive screen 2.3%. Figure 4 
figure 4 illustrates the most likely sources to be poly among female nursing students. It was observed that 58.5% of nursing students reported that classmate was the most likely source to be the poly, followed by faculty members with 53.1%, then clinical instructors with 50%, and after that patient or patient's family with 47.7%. The least three frequent perpetrators of polling behaviors were nursing staff, 38.5%, administrative staff, 33.8%, and finally physician staff. 17.7%. Figure number 5 displays the frequency of coping structures to adopt with polling behaviors among female nursing students. The most frequent coping structures of polling behaviors experienced by participants were putting up barriers. 39.2%, followed by pretending not to observe the behavior, 38.5%, then doing nothing, 36.9%, after that demonstrated similar behavior, 29.2%, and replying directly to the poly, 25.4%. Figure number 6 states the frequency for reasons of not reporting about polling behaviors among female nursing students. The most frequent reasons of not reporting polling behavior experienced by participants were fearing of punishment, 46.2% followed by fearing of poor behavior, 43.8%, then doing nothing, 41.5% after that. Labeling a troublemaker, 39.2%, and finally, don't know whom to report, 27.7%. Table number two present is the relation between types of polling behaviors of female nursing student academic here. There were statistical significance differences between different types of polling behaviors and the nurse student academic here. The student of internship here had the highest mean value for verbal, psychological, and physical polling behaviors respectively, while the student of sophomore year had the lowest mean score for all forms of polling behaviors. Table 3 shows the relation between consequences of polling behaviors and the female nursing student academic year. It was apparent to that. The highest percent of nurses in turn were experiencing psychological symptoms of polling behaviors, while the majority of students in sophomore and senior year were more exposed to physiological and behavioral symptoms, respectively. There were statistical significance differences between the participant academic year and different consequences of polling behaviors. Based on the study finding, this research recommended the following point. There is a need to establish policy for identifying the legal implications in behaving with polling behaviors not only towards the nurse's student, but also toward the faculty. Increasing the student and the faculty awareness for the appropriate coping strategies for dealing with the cycle of polling process through conducting workshops and seminars. The academic nursing administrators must integrate the polling issue in the curriculum of nursing education program for knowing how to manage, cope, and interact professionally in these situations. Developing a rapport relationship between nurse student and faculty, especially the clinical instructors. There is a need for conducting further longitudinal studies to identify the root causes and the indirect effect of polling behaviors in nursing academic and the clinical setting environment. In conclusion, there is an evidence that so the female nursing student experienced different forms of polling behaviors in clinical and the traditional classroom setting. The main perpetrators were classmates, faculty members, clinical instructors, patients, or patients' families. The consequences of polling behavior were mainly psychological, physiological, and behavioral symptoms. The common coping strategies were putting up barriers, pretending not to observe the behavior, doing nothing, and demonstrating similar behavior. The most frequent reasons for not reporting polling behavior were fearing punishment or poor evaluation, doing nothing, labeling as a troublemaker, and don't know whom to report. Thank you for attention and for giving me the chance to be a participant among different nursing experts. Thanks.